Hi, I hope you're enjoying this conference and I hope you will also enjoy this session about system optimization using data. The fact that you are here tells me that you do care about your machines, motors, drives, and that you appreciate a smoothly running system. I guess you do that because you know what it means when systems don't work as expected. When machines stop working suddenly because of a failure, maybe a broken bearing. This can become a very unpleasant situation with lots of stress, panic, and cost. So the question becomes, how can we prevent those situations? And this is what this session is all about. My name is Jörg Daniel. I'm a lead engineer at Danfoss Drives, and we have developed solutions for that to make your life easier. And for the next 50 minutes, I'll be talking about condition-based monitoring. I'll show you what it is, how it works, and what's in it for you. And before I go there, I will talk about different maintenance strategies, and I will explain you how you can use the drive as a sensor before I get into condition-based monitoring. So if we talk about maintenance, you will see that people use different strategies, and um, one of them is corrective maintenance. The idea of corrective maintenance is simple. You just let the machine run until failure, and if there's a failure, you go and fix it. That works fine if you have the right people with the right tools and spare parts around to fix the issue quickly. But you need to accept a certain amount of downtime. That's okay sometimes, but if it's not okay, you need to find another strategy. One of them is pre preventive maintenance. The idea of preventive maintenance is that you define a maintenance schedule upfront based on the knowledge, experience, and the supplier information that you have. The more information you have, the better you can design this schedule. We have a service called Drive Pro Preventive Maintenance that can help you in setting this schedule up. But anyway, it's based on assumptions. And if those assumptions don't hold along the lifetime of the product, you end up doing either too much maintenance or too little. Both is not optimal. If you want to optimize your maintenance schedule, you need to move towards data-driven strategies. And the key idea here is that you continuously measure over the lifetime of the product, analyze this data, and update your maintenance schedule. You have two choices. One is predictive maintenance, and the other one is condition-based maintenance. The idea of predictive maintenance is that you measure the stress that you are putting on your components. You take this info through statistical lifetime models that can predict the remaining useful lifetime of the components. This you can then use to optimize your maintenance schedule. The idea of condition-based maintenance is different. Here you want to measure the fault symptoms on your components. So if any of those fault symptoms rise, this is an indication of an evolving fault. So once you get a notification, you can react to it. You can start planning while the system continues running. So you can find the right people, the right tools, the right spare parts, and you can figure out when to execute on it. That's the idea of condition-based maintenance. When you look at those four strategies, you will see that the data-driven ones, namely predictive and condition-based maintenance, are more complex and they require more effort and more investments. But it really depends on your needs. You can look at this like a toolbox and you need to pick the right tools, making a trade-off between benefits versus costs. If you go for data-driven strategies, one of the key steps is to create data. But the good news is that the drives that you are having in your, in your applications, they contain a lot of data already today. And now I want to show you what this data could look like. So if you look at the data that the drive has inside, you can group it into three boxes. One of them is instant signals. The second one is processed signals. And the third one is analyzed signals. Let's start with instant signals. We have a bunch of sensors inside the drive. It's namely motor currents, voltages, temperatures, and we use it for motor control and for protection purposes. But we can also use it to, to uh, monitor the systems. We can also hook up a couple of other sensors to the drive, for instance, vibration, pressure, flow, or humidity sensors. We can use all this information mostly for troubleshooting activities and corrective maintenance actions. Because you can hook up to the drive, take a snapshot of the signals, and this can tell you what to fix. 
but you don't want to stream those signals out because it's a massive amount of data. This is why we can take the next step and process this data. So basically, we, we kind of filter out useless information. For instance, we can extract fault signatures out of the motor currents. And this is valuable information. We can also do statistical aggregations, and we can also derive mission profile information. This is kind of a data compression, and you can think about streaming this data out. But we can also take it to the next level, the analytics part, where the drive then analyzes those signals in order to draw conclusions. Is there anything wrong on the application? And here, condition-based monitoring is our example today. And why is this important to understand this, these different layers? It's important because you have different needs. Let me give you two examples. If you are an OEM customer, you know most about your machines. You don't want us to analyze the signals for your problems. But what you would be interested in is reading the processed signals, because this can be an input to your analytics. So you can read it out. You can put a remote monitoring on top of it or you can do predictive analytics, you can do fleet analysis, you can compare different drives, or you can use it to optimize your process. The second example is an end user. If you run an entire factory, different components from different suppliers, you don't want to analyze all this. You want actionable insights from the components. You will be interested in the analytics part of our drives. And here again, condition monitoring, is our example for you. So let's look into condition-based monitoring. This figure shows the basic idea of condition monitoring. It shows the con condition of the equipment over time. Usually equipment starts from a healthy condition and it ends up in a failure condition. This is the point on the right. Usually failures don't happen suddenly. There's some kind of degradation. Some failure mode go a little bit faster, others are a little bit slower. But you see this degradation. And the whole point of condition monitoring is to catch the early indications early enough so you can react to it on time. And what we have done in Dunfus Drives in our products, we have implemented a couple of functions doing exactly that. We have made three functions. One is state of winding monitoring based on motor currents and voltages. The second one is vibration monitoring, which is based on an external sensor that you can mount on the machine and we analyze this inside the drive. This is to monitor the mechanical part of the systems, bearing faults, for instance. The third functionality is called load envelope monitoring, where we look into the application side. The best way to explain all this is actually a live demonstration. And this is what we have here, and this is what we go into now. Here we have a typical application we have an electric motor, which is driving a pump, and this pump is circulating some water through the pipes. This, machine, this motor is driven by a frequency converter that is sitting inside the table. You can't see it. But what you can see is the display of the drive. We brought it up here to, to show you the information. Right now, you just get some ordinary operational information. And what we can do on this setup is we can, we can simulate a few failures. First of all, we can simulate the beginning of a state of winding fault with this knob. It's creating a short circuit between some windings. We can do with this valve, we can do some application fault simulation. So emulate, for instance, filter clogging or clog pipes. And what we can also do is we can simulate a mechanical failure with this handle. So right now the system is running its normal application. It's in a healthy condition. The drive is um, not displaying any notification that something's wrong, so everything is good. So when I press this handle, what will happen is it will lift the motor on one side. So this will create a misalignment on the, on the, of the shaft. And this misalignment is nothing critical. But if you continue running with this, it will wear out the bearing faster than it should. And the one out bearing is actually the failure point where you can't operate the system anymore. So if I press this handle now, what happens is we have this misalignment fault. So you can continue running. There's no issue yet, but the fault will evolve and create a, this bearing fault. 
And what CBM is doing right now, it, it's, it's analyzing the signal from the vibration sensor. It's doing some correlation and analytics. And what it tells us is there's a high vibration. So with this modification now, you can leave the system running. You can continue the production, or you can start planning maintenance. So you can think about what are the people that I need, what are the spare parts, the tools, when can I do it, is there a production stop anyway where I can fit this maintenance action in. So what you have seen is that you get a notification on the display. This is useful if people are around the drive and then can actually see the notification. But most of the time there's no, no one around the drive. So what you can also do is you can read the status information of CBM out through the field buses and bring it into your, your systems uh, to make people aware of it. You can also bring this information out to analog outputs of the drive to control some traffic lights so the operator next to the machine can actually see um, that there's an issue. Now you may wonder what's the big deal with it. There's a mechanical problem. We have a vibration sensor. The vibration signal goes up. So that sounds simple and we can give you the notification that this vibration is high. The challenge with vibration is that even though when there's no failure with different speeds the vibration pattern will look different even though there's no issue at all. So this is the intelligence that we build into the drive. It can handle this variable normal vibration pattern because it learns first what is the normal vibration in this system. We call it a baseline. So when you commission CBM what you will do first is you need to run a baseline measurement. So you take data, you do statistical calculations and you build a baseline model, how we call it. And once this is ready, we switch into monitoring. So we actually watch out for changes. So with this, this system is pretty robust and um, we apply the same principle also to the state of winding and the load envelope monitoring. So we need to measure a baseline and once we have the baseline ready, we switch into monitoring and watch out for changes. So as you as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's easy to commission this functionality and it's easy to use and it's easy to understand what's the problem. I hope you enjoyed this live demonstration. Now let's have a look at the benefits of condition-based monitoring. You will see a significant reduction of maintenance costs, downtime and breakdowns you will see an improvement of productivity and all this adds up to a saving of 8 to 12 percent compared with traditional maintenance strategies. What I want you to take home from my presentation today is that data-driven strategies can optimize your maintenance and system performance and that you can use drives as smart sensors to provide you relevant data. And the condition-based monitoring feature inside the drive provides you actionable insights and it's very easy to use and easy to get going with. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and now we go into a Q&A session. Thanks Eric, that was a really great presentation. We did get some questions from the audience. One of the questions that we got is, is condition-based monitoring included in the standard software? Ah, that's a very good question. Condition-based monitoring comes as a licensed feature. There's a one-time license fee, and you have two options. You can either directly buy a new drive with CBM included from factory, or if you have a, uh, a drive already in the field, you can, do, you can purchase a license code and you can do a field upgrade. It's quite handy to be so flexible. Mm -hmm. The next question, what's needed to get started with the condition-based monitoring? Oh yeah, that's a very wonderful question. I like that a lot. Uh, it's not so that we invented condition monitoring. Condition monitoring systems have been around for many, many years. But if you look around, you'll see most of the motors globally are not being monitored. So why is that? And I believe the reason is that the condition monitoring systems are fairly expensive, first of all. Secondly, it's pretty complicated to use. I would say you need an expert on site that is capable of using it and interpreting the results out of it. So this creates a an, an very high initial barrier to get into condition monitoring. And if you now look at condition-based monitoring that we have inside our drive, it's fairly cheap. 
It's easy to use, it's actually very easy to use, and it's super easy to get started with. So what you need is a drive with a condition-based monitoring license. If you want to do vibration monitoring, you also need a vibration sensor. If you have your own sensors, you can use them. We can also provide you the vibration sensor now. And then you're pretty much ready to go. You, you need to commission the drive, but that's very few steps only. We made an easy startup wizard for you. Or you can use our PC tool, MCT10. We made a plugin for that, for the CVM part, uh, which takes you through the commissioning and which gives you a nice visualization of the data that CVM is using. So it's really easy to get started. I think that's the major difference comparing with other systems. That sounds awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.